I remember my first year of teaching. I had just finished uh, lecturing on a doctrine of the faith, and after class, this woman came up to me, very troubled and uh, distraught, and we started to talk about um, that lecture, but then we moved beyond that to talk about her own background, even her own experience, and finally, she, um, she revealed why she was so troubled. She explained that she had grown up in a Roman Catholic church all of her life, and came out of this type of background and never could find the type of assurance of her salvation that she, she really longed for. And it left her so uneasy about her salvation, her even her e eternal destiny, and where she is in terms of whether or not she has a right status with the Lord or not. She would go to work and um, talk to her co-workers who just happened to be evangelical Christians. And she was always so surprised and confused and perplexed that even though they were sinners like she was, that they somehow still had this assurance of their salvation. She didn't understand how that could be possible. And uh, in that moment, uh, it just filled me with great joy to just turn to her and to say to her, there's great, great news. In Jesus Christ, you can have full assurance because Jesus paid it all. Of course, you don't have to come from that type of a background to struggle with Christian assurance of salvation. Even many evangelicals today struggle with assurance. Many who believe in Jesus Christ and believe all the right things or um, have a personal relationship with Christ, but nonetheless still struggle to know whether they are right with God or whether they really know God or whether their eternal salvation is secure in Jesus Christ. And sometimes this struggle can bring these, those individuals into very dark times. I think that the answer to this is just pivotal and crucial to the Christian faith as a whole. Where do we turn in those dark moments? Because let's be honest, uh, Satan is usually right there on our shoulder, isn't he? Uh, he's the one making the accusation, saying, yes, you're not worthy. You're not right with God. You're a sinner. How could you be? And you deserve eternal condemnation. Trouble is, he's right. And if we only look within ourselves, we don't have anything to say in response to Satan. But if we look outside of ourselves, external to ourselves, what we find is great hope. Martin Luther talked about how we need an alien righteousness. Uh, we don't need a righteousness of our own. Can't hold that up before God as sinners. Rather, we need a righteousness outside of ourselves, one that comes from Jesus Christ. Martin Luther liked to describe this by saying, there's a great exchange that takes place. Christ has taken our sin, and in exchange, he has given us his perfect, flawless righteousness. But the author of Hebrews talks about this in Hebrews chapter 10, chapter 10, and in all kinds of ways, he describes Christ as our great high priest, the one who enters into the holiest place in order to make atonement for our sin. The problem prior to Christ was a very serious one. Sacrifices had to be offered over and over again. Even the, even the priest himself had to make a blood sacrifice for his own sin. But when Christ came, as our high priest, he came offering his own blood, and his own blood is definitive. His own atonement is an atonement once for all. And Hebrews tells us that not only do we have our sins forgiven, but Christ the righteous, his righteousness is then given to us as well. Not only are we forgiven, but we have his righteous status before God. And Hebrews 10 concludes and says, it's on this basis that you then have full assurance of your salvation.